If you're watching this video, there's probably a few things that I know about you. You probably love animals, you probably love being outside, and you probably quite like the work that you do to be meaningful and to go towards things that you care about. There are so many different wildlife jobs out there and so many different types at loads of different levels. You can work as a scientist describing new species. You can rehabilitate injured wildlife and make sure that their species keeps going in the wild. Wildlife work can take you all over the world. You can find yourself exploring jungles one day and mountains and few months later. You can volunteer in conservation programs or even lead them. You can help hatch crocodiles and release sea turtles back into the ocean. If marine wildlife is more your thing, there is so much to study in the ocean. You can be on its surface or you can go diving with its inhabitants. There is so much work to be done to protect the world that we live in. And luckily, so many different people are needed to fill these roles. Obviously a lot of these jobs are dream jobs for so many people, all walks of life, all kinds of backgrounds, so it really does make it competitive. There are so many different places that I have found that I've only heard of through word of mouth or through people showing me them when I've actually been away doing conservation work. So I'm going to use this video as an opportunity to share with you what I've learned over the roughly 10 years on and off working with wildlife so that you can then go on and you can find your very first volunteer role or your next conservation internship or your next paid role and just keep building towards the, your goals and fulfilling your dreams. So who am I? I'm Stephanie Martin and I've worked in different wildlife roles over a number of years. I've studied, worked, interned, volunteered, all of the different things that you might be trying to do now. These days I do a lot more to do with things like environmental journalism and conservation storytelling and like little wildlife presenting things. So I basically communicate the things that I'm very passionate about, the things that I used to work in practically. Another key part of what I try and do is help other people to pursue their dreams. Wildlife work can be so difficult to break into and just to find good quality roles so I'm trying to take the experience that I've had and use it to help other people to achieve what they want to achieve. So on my website I've got a nature jobs board and I interview scientists and there's loads of different things that I do there to try and help people and this is one of them. So this video will hopefully help some of you to find the work that you want to find and to be able to build a career that you want to build. In this video specifically I am sharing five of the best places that I have found to find wildlife wildlife work online. Some of these you may have heard of before, you may even use them now, but I bet there's at least one or two that you haven't. Everything I talk about in this video will be linked to in the description below. You can also subscribe down there. <laughs> so let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is Facebook groups. The two most useful groups that I found, there's one called Wildlife Workers Network and the other is Wildlife Science Career Network. Both these groups are just packed full of thousands of people who love wildlife and are trying to build a career in wildlife. Life. So there's loads of different people from all different walks of life with different levels of experience as well. So it's not just a place where jobs get posted, internships get posted, volunteering gets posted, it, they are posted there, but there's also loads of really helpful discussions. There's a lot of people there that are able to give encouragement, advice, and just build these really great communities of people just trying to achieve the same goal, basically be able to work to protect wildlife. So I've got the two links in the description to those Facebook groups and I really, really recommend them. If you're in any other, like wildlife work, Facebook Facebook groups that I haven't mentioned here then feel free to put them in the comments and it'll be a really good resource for other people who might be watching this video trying to find other cool groups that they can join. So this next one is one that I found the most useful. No one I come across has ever really heard of them. It's very much seems to be like a word of mouth thing. So those are actually listservs. The two that I'm going to recommend is Ecolog and the other one is Evoldir. These two in particular have been fantastic and I've got really good work from there before. So these are basically just mailing lists. People submit a job or an internship or volunteering or other stuff as well like conferences, training, courses, loads of different cool bits of information in the field. It's really really interesting and really useful. The thing that's confusing about them I think is just the method of signing up. It's not just a case of putting in your email and clicking submit and then you're on a mailing list. Not like if you sign up to my mailing list on my blog which is linked to at the bottom. No, these are a little bit more complex. The eco log list that I've linked to at the bottom, that's a little bit more straightforward. They 
they've laid out clear instructions on how you sign up. So you basically need to be a member, but membership is free and you just sign up for that and then you go through the stages and then you're on this list. The other one is Evil Deer, which is short for Evolutionary Directory. Most of the jobs and opportunities up there tend to be related to evolution, which is pretty interesting. And that's the mailing list where I found one of my coolest jobs, which was a research assistant in Spain studying wasps. The Evil Deer list is a bit more confusing so I've put the link there that's going to take you to this blank page with some small text on and you have to send your email address to an email address and you have to include a binary code but it's actually quite straightforward. The reason these listservs are so particularly good is partly because not as many people know of them. If you type in wildlife work jobs board, environmental jobs board, that kind of thing, you'll get the same things up that everyone's going to get up that everyone's found. So it's super competitive. Because these listservs are less well known and because they're particularly related to academia, so the roles that come forward are PhDs and postdocs, but also research assistantships for those postdocs and for those scientists. So it's less competitive because there's fewer people that can find it. So I really recommend in taking the time to sign up to those because you can find brilliant things there, work, internships, volunteering, training, courses, advice, recommendations, just so much and it's really, really a good thing to be a part of. You'll get flooded with emails but you can bulk get them but I really like getting them individually so I've got loads and loads and loads. This next one is probably the most obvious one, it's specialised job boards. So you've probably signed up to some already. In the UK one of the big ones is environmentjob.co.uk, link to in the description. In the US a pretty good one I found is the conservation job board and that is what I link to at the bottom. So I'll link to a bunch of ones that I know about and that I know to be good in the description. I'm sure you'll be able to find more in your country or in your area as well, you can find really specific ones. So that is about doing a bit of a Google search really like environment jobs board this area or wildlife careers this area and just seeing what comes up but I've put the overall big ones that I know about and that I've personally found really useful in the description. Another thing that I found pretty useful recently is just going onto those like massive jobs boards you know like Indeed or Monster ones like that and you can set up alerts for keywords so I have one set up for like wildlife, science communication, like loads of different things that I'm interested in and specific phrases so you could set one up for like ranger or content conservation volunteer like stuff like that I get them sent directly to my email I don't have to go trawling through like pages and pages of stuff I would just never do that but emails I find very good utilize your emails I don't read all of mine but I utilize them I also have a specialized jobs board on my website it's called global nature jobs so it's just jobs relating to nature although there's also volunteering internships PhDs and postdocs listed in different categories so I'll link to that at the bottom you can also subscribe at the top of that page and then I just send you a weekly roundup of of all of the new positions that have come through and you can click you can look at the page and then you can subscribe and then you can get your dream role you are welcome my final recommendation is a specific list that Google comes up with. So if you Google any phrase and then jobs, Google comes up with this automatic list of jobs that are near you that fit that description. And I find that really fantastic. So those are the five main sources of jobs, internships, basically opportunities for working in wildlife. So now I'm going to give you guys a few tips, a little bit of advice, just some little bits that I've picked up along the way that you might also find useful. One of the biggest tips I can give you start saving just start a little fund that's just gonna be this is for my career and I know that this advice is really generic for anyone all the time everywhere I never did that and I do regret that start saving now and it will really help you out in the long run wildlife conservation can be such an expensive field to start out in so it's just getting into the frame of mind that this is gonna be reality for a little while or a long while. The other bit of advice I have, quite obvious, volunteer. So volunteer locally. Because I really love tropical rainforests, I was like, well, I have to go to them. That's where I need to volunteer an internship and stuff. I can't just do it locally. But obviously I absolutely could have done it locally and I could have had really good transferable skills. Even if I volunteered doing stuff to do with like trees, like <laughs> there's trees everywhere. That's transferable. You could volunteer to help out researchers or postgrad students at local universities. Look online, there's probably gonna be a volunteer organization near you. The conservation volunteers, that's a pretty big one in the UK. Definitely try 
try and seek out those opportunities and even if you think like oh it's not exactly what I want it'll be transferable and more importantly it just evidences your passion that's what employers and that will care about they won't care about how specific it is necessarily particularly when you're if you're still at uni or if you've just started working or whatever like from school they just want that evidence that you care and that that is something you will sacrifice your personal time in with no pay like that's a pretty big deal so definitely start looking at that and prioritizing that and I know at the moment it's really difficult because there's a global pandemic going on I don't know if you know it's not ideal but there are places you can do it online which is a really good news and I actually already covered this in a blog post so I've linked to that in the bottom it's 10 different places to volunteer for wildlife online and it's 10 different sites that have loads of different projects you can volunteer with and again that's something brilliant because when you go to apply to internships or jobs or whatever afterwards assuming there is an end to this you can say during the pandemic I spent my time volunteering for wildlife I did it online I helped scientists to identify animals from their camera trap footage or or I helped this organization to design their graphics there's loads of really cool online wildlife volunteering roles that people don't seem to know about so definitely check out that list I know I'm just plugging myself but honestly I think it's a really good list so in a similar vein to that evidencing your passion consider joining the online world of wildlife communications think about a way that you could communicate your passion online to a wider audience so whether that's photos on Instagram videos on TikTok or YouTube writing a blog whatever it is it's just a way of saying like I really love this thing and I really care about this thing it doesn't have to be amazing it just has to be something that you do and it's something that you can include when you're applying people like to see that you care about the thing it feels like wildlife conservation they're so driven by passion that's why so many salaries and stipends are so low it's because people know they don't have to pay much to get people in what draws people into these roles is a love and a passion and a drive to want to do something one of the internships that I actually got I got because I was the most passionate person we had to give a PowerPoint a little talk about why we wanted to do it blah 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 they said to me the reason I got the role was because I was the only candidate that actually showed passion for the organism so actually expressed that they cared about the tarantulas I did a whole thing about like I was in the Amazon rainforest look at these spiders I saw I thought they were so cool look at these arachnids and like talked about like oh I love tarantulas because tarantulas are like big and furry I didn't say that I said like actual good stuff I just can't remember it now but I evidenced my passion and I had photos and I had stories and because of that they selected me they said there were people that are more skilled than me that had more experience than me but they wanted someone that cared and that makes sense if you're someone running like an NGO or like a non-profit to do with wildlife they're gonna want somebody that cares so even if you don't have quite the qualifications or quite the experience you can still get lucky because you can still connect with someone on that level of like we really want this thing to be good don't worry about time don't compare yourself to like oh my friend is doing this amazing thing but I've only done these things Ugh. like everyone's on their own path everyone gets exposure to different opportunities just keep building your own little blocks up and up like one thing at a time a little bit of volunteering here little networking there like you will get to where you want to be just don't stress about time it just doesn't matter if you're doing what you're passionate about it just does not matter how long that takes what would you be doing instead something you're not passionate about that'd be stupid keep going so we come to the end of this video I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you found it useful if you have then please like and subscribe this is a fairly new YouTube channel so any sort of interaction you have is really really nice and lovely and makes me really happy and smiley <laughs> If you want more wildlife careers advice, then definitely check out my blog. There's some cool stuff there, like free online conservation courses, other stuff I mentioned earlier, the Global Jobs Board. I also send around new jobs every week. And if you subscribe to the channel, you also tick the bell thing and then you can get notified when I make new videos. So I sort of alternating between little wildlife adventure videos and then more informative videos like this. So like I'll be doing quite a lot more to do with building a wildlife career, resources, things like that. So definitely subscribe if this this is a field of work that you are interested in going into because there will be more useful information. Thank you for watching my video. Good night. What was I saying? Oh, however. There's a magpie outside. Chubby little magpie. Looks like I've been overwatering my piece, Lily. I don't really know I can say that. Probably not that.